So the question comes up, has come up several times, about um, what I use for epoxy in the in uh, intake ports. And there's times on some saws I'll grind through on uh, transfer ports as well on the roof, trying to change the angle of entry. And um, I just use good old JB Weld, uh, nothing special about it. I do not use the quick cure. Uh, that stuff isn't worth spending your money on. Um, but just just regular JB Weld. Um, and there's a lot of other epoxies out there that probably adhere better, are, are harder, are stronger. Um, but let's say... Uh, this comes loose and it falls out somewhere down the road someday um, a real hard epoxy something that's you know uh, very hard um, if that goes through your motor you're not gonna have a motor left and I've done enough testing with this stuff that it does fail now and then, not real often, but once in a while. And I back it up 100%. If it fails, I'll redo it. Um, the, the failures that we've had with it, um, it the saw ate it right up. Didn't hurt saw at all. Uh, no damage, no nothing. Didn't have to do anything. Just redo the epoxy. Um, the saw will act really different, really quick. And usually you get a large plume of white, stinky smoke out of it. And the uh, saw will stay running, but it'll need a retune generally. And if it's in a transfer port, then you'll have an air leak. But if it's just in the intake port, usually you can just retune it, keep on running the saw and, and until you got time to uh, take care of it. Um, <clears throat> one thing I've learned over time with this stuff is um, wash the cylinder, anything you want to use prior to grinding the intake port and once you grind this intake port for epoxy don't wash it again with anything um, it, almost everything that you would use would leave a residue of some kind and by grinding it you've removed all of that residue and it won't have any effect on the epoxy or how well it adheres. Um, brake clean is probably one of the worst things you could put in there just prior to epoxy. Um, it attacks the, the bond and it almost always fails if you do that. And I put by far more in here than I need. I want to ensure that I've got everything and uh, I just grind it all back out. Um, that easy to put in there. We'll leave this set overnight and then uh, we'll be uh, redoing that. But um, I think that epoxy, uh, the, uh, I don't have any issues with this. Um, I avoid it if I can, um, but for this saw, uh, it, it's to get the exhaust port where I wanted it. It was kind of inevitable that we were going to put some epoxy in there. So, <coughs> um, I guess that's about all I got on that. I'll tag this on to the to the video of me grinding out the the epoxy. So, till the next one. 
All right, so a box is set up here now, uh, actually a couple of days. Uh, had some other stuff to do. Get back to this one. Um, we'll uh, we'll start grinding on this, timing this, and see where we end up. You can see I'm only putting in like uh, uh, 40 to 60 thousandths. I've got three eighths of an inch in there. Um, but it does roll up onto the um, tape and I've found that putting way more than I need in there ends up with a much better finish in the end. And I always have this little drippy stuff down here and it doesn't stick. This is a pretty dull little jack knife and uh, we can just peel this stuff off of here. And the reason I use a dull knife is I don't want to get into my face of this. You know, I'll put some light scratches in here, but nothing, uh, no big grooves. And I avoid cleaning this area just so that um, this stuff doesn't stick very well. And again, I'm using my aluminum hog.
I got plenty in there yet. I'm going to time it just to see where I'm at and then I'll be right back. So I can't time it yet because it won't fit on the saw on the piston. I got a ridge in here. Um, this is a kind of a worn out file. Just a, a 730 seconds I think uh, chainsaw file. It's kind of wore out. It's not very sharp. If you lay it flat in here on the, on the plating, it, it won't put any kind of mark whatsoever on the plating. But it'll, it'll take my epoxy off. Just no need to push very hard here. And as long as you keep that file flat on that plating, it's not going to hurt it at all. It's just too large of a surface for it to, to do anything. And the file is relatively dull. It, I won't use it for to try to sharpen a chain anymore. And it's just a feel. Flat and square in there and... and I just run it around until I really can't feel anything anymore on the file and and uh, when I'm all done I'll sand that by hand just a little bit to relieve it a little bit from the piston I guess all right now we should be able to time it all right so we're at about 158 I'm going to go to a finer cut tool here. This is a, I got a Christmas tree shape, um, double cut, uh, a lot smoother, give me a little more precision. I'll come back I'll show you when I've got it finished all right so I've got it timed out at about 166 um, that's a pretty good number for me uh, I like 165 166 is fine up to 168 is okay um, <coughs> so I'm gonna show just how little I've really put in there hopefully you can see this it's just not very much um, so you know I put a lot in I grind a lot out um, 
I had to change it a little shape in there in the corners on the metal itself and that's always hard to do because you have one soft material one hard material so I dropped my block in there I remarked this one I got a little dip over here and I cleaned it up just a little bit this is what I ended up with um, one little funny spot there I cleaned it up a little bit better and this is what I come up with it's not perfectly flat but I don't want to fix this little bump by taking all this out I was trying to take some aluminum off the side here and got into the epoxy just a little bit um, so this is good the majority of this is at 166 I got one little spot here that's probably 168 or so and that's fine I'm not gonna argue with that um, we'll chamfer this all out and and that'll be it for the intake port and we'll move on to the transfer ports